um, it's Willing Away, and welcome back to Through the Parks. So considering that this week is technically the week of Thanksgiving, a lot of these videos are pre-recorded. <laughs> I've recorded them in advance, um, and I chose relatively shorter park histories, uh, some that really don't even have histories, or very small amounts, uh, so that, you know, I could get these done in time and have these ready for you guys. So the first park we'll be covering is the Great Basin Park, uh, the National Park. And um, the next couple of parks will, are also pre-recorded. So uh, they'll be scheduled to come out at, at you know the times they're supposed to come out, but I won't actually be <laughs> recording them that day. <laughs> uh, so if you hear me continue talking as if the next episode you guys see is like the same day I recorded the Great Basin, it's because I probably recorded it the same day. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'm not lying when I say the Great Basin has barely any history and is a relatively short park. There is literally only three pages of research for this park. That's the entire thing. And more than half is not even the history. I don't really even think there was history for this park that I could find. Just very small amounts, like when it was made and stuff like that. Uh, most of it's about the flora, the fauna, the ecology, you know, that kind of stuff that we normally cover after the history. Um, that's kind of just the majority of what the Great Basin is, is just the flora and fauna. And that's what makes up its history, is these floral and fauna. Anyways, uh, after that, I'm just going to get started with our overall info. So, the National Park of the Great Basin is located in White Pine County, which is in east-central Nevada, near the Utah border. The park was established in 1986, and the most common way to enter the park is through Nevada State Route 488, which is connected to U.S. Route 6 and 50 by Nevada State Route 487. And I can't remember which one. It was either Route 6 or Route 50, but one of them is actually named, like, the loneliest, like, route in the United States, and I'm guessing that's just because nobody drives on it. <laughs> but it was weird, because I was like, Route 50, where's that? And it, I was just greeted with loneliest highway. I'm like, okay, <laughs> alrighty. Um, but U.S. Route 6 and 50, which are by Nevada State Route 487. The closest settlement to this park is a small town called Baker, which is in White Pine County. The park is very secluded. It's literally, the small. this small town is like the closest you can get to human civilization near the park or in the park. Uh, the park name uh, comes from the dry mountain, uh, the dry and mountainous region between uh, Sierra, Nevada, and the Wasatch, Wasatch Mountains, which is called the Great Basin. So this area in between these mountains and regions is called the Great Basin. Uh, but topographically, however, this place is called uh, the Basin and Range Provenance. Don't ask me why, but apparently that's what it's called. <laughs> so this park is 200 and mi 290 miles north of Las Vegas and protects about 77,000 180 acres of land. The park is known for its ancient bristlecone pines um, and the oldest known living non-clonal organisms. Lehman Caves, Wheeler Peak Glacier, Wheeler Peak, and some of the darkest night skies in the U.S., but if you have watched the Big Bend episode, we know that Big Bend actually has the darkest skies in the United States. They're labeled as the darkest skies. However, the Great Basin also does have some pretty dark skies, so you can see stars. President Harding created the Lehman Caves National Monument on January 24th, 1922, and then the surrounding area was declared a national park on October 27th, 1986, following the um, advocacy, advo advocacy I can speak, <laughs> of Congressman Harry Reid. There are a number of campsites and backcountry camping opportunities in this park, and the Highland Ridge Wilderness, which lies adjacent to the Great Basin Park, provides continuous wildlife habitat and protection of 226.8 square miles of eastern Nevada's basin land. That is, like, mainly the overall information you need to know. Now we're going to kind of get into specifics. We're just going to go into the flora. I'm telling you, there's barely any history on this park that I could find. So, the flora. The park contains 11 species of con confir trees and over 800 species of plants. 
around the visitor centers, you can actually find uh, quite a variety of plants in sight. You can see sagebrush, saltbush, single leaf pinyon. It's, it's spelled so weirdly. Uh, and something called the Utah juniper. Higher areas of the park house your mountain meadows, and these would contain your white fir, your quaking aspen, Engelmann spruce, and large ponderosa pines. And then there are also several endemic plants in the park. These ones are like your Mount Wheeler sandwort and Holgram's buckwheat. The oldest non-clonal organism ever discovered was a Great Basin bristlecone pine tree that was 5,000 years old. However, get this, a graduate student and the U.S. Forest Service uh, personnel cut it down for what they stated was research purposes. I read that, I was reading this, and I got to the 5,000 year old tree and I was like, oh wow, cool, can I go see it? And then I read that a graduate student and the US Forest Service cut it down and I was like, hmm, what research purposes? It better have been fucking important. That's f Imagine living 5,000 years as a tree and then you just get cut down. Like you don't even die of natural causes. You just, you get sliced in half for research purposes. Personally, I'd be pissed. <laughs> However, they nicknamed the tree Prometheus after the Greek figure who stole fire from the gods and gave it to man. Don't ask me why. I don't know how this tree is relevant to Prometheus. How did it get... Because in Prometheus, he takes the fire from the gods and he basically makes man. And he gives, like, like the man, like, life. Like, stuff like that. If I'm remembering the story correctly. How is a tree doing that? A 5,000-year-old tree. What is the fire it is giving us? Anyways, <laughs> that is my rant on that. The fauna, uh, there, you know, we're moving on to the fauna now, but the park has 61 species of mammals, 18 species of reptile, 238 species of birds. That was, that was, that was a huge jump. <laughs> uh, two species of amphibians and eight species of fish. Uh, some of the mammals that you can find in the park are jackrabbits, pygmy rabbits, mountain cottontails, ground squirrels, chipmunks, and various mice. You can also find pronghorns, coyotes, kit foxes, and badgers, but they are a little less common. If you do not know, sorry, if you do not know what a kit fox looks like, please look it up. They are adorable. They're like permanently small foxes, but they're not like your fennec foxes. They look like foxes, like uh, forest foxes that you'd find, but they're small. They're adorable. And I went on a whole rant about them, but they are beautiful. In more of your, like, rugged areas, so you're harder to live, you are going to find ki uh, not coyotes, cougars, bobcats, marmots, rock squirrels, and bighorn sheep, elk, mule deer, spotted skunks, shrews, ringtail cats, and ermine. I had to look up what an ermine was. They are also really cute. <laughs> They're kind of like a little weasel, but they're not like a weasel. Look them up. They're adorable. They're like so fluffy and furry. I just want to squeeze one. Now we move on to the fish in the area. There is only literally one native fish to the park, and that is the Bonneville cutthroat trout. Some other trout species that are in the park, however, are your Lahontan cutthroat trout, your rainbow, brook, and brown trout. Those were introduced. Those are not native to the park, but they do live in the park. Some of the bird species that you can find um, are the Canada, ge Canada, ah, Canada geese, hawks, sparrows, bald eagles, tundra swans, barn owls, snow geese, killdeer, golden eagles, woodpeckers, uh, woodpeckers, mallards, wrens, greater roadrunners, chickadees, great horned owls, ravens, magpies, and swallows. And then the only two amphibian species in the park are the western spadefoot toad and the leopard frog. And that finishes our flora, fauna, and all different types of creatures. Now we move on to your geology. So many of the rocks uh, that are present in the Great Basin formed during the Cambrian period. So as the Paleozoic era progressed, several events happened, such as like faulting, oro, 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 that just means rocks rising. That's literally all it means. Um, and also created mafic and rhyotic walls and sills. 
Extensive volcanism also occurred during this time and during the late Cambrian, uh, which caused more uplifting in the area. This contributed to co conglomerates, ash flows, and tufts, which started to accumulate in what is called the Snake Range. There was also glaci uh, glaciation. I can say that. <laughs> Glaciers. So, glaciation <laughs> during the Pleistocene period uh, heavily eroded the peaks of the Snake Range, and that left canyon walls, valleys, something called circas, and moraines. Your layman caves uh, formed around 550 million years ago. Uh, did my Xbox just turn on? Anyways, that thing is possessed, I swear. Um, these caves uh, formed around 550 million years ago, while submerged in a warm and shallow ocean. The caves contain marble and limestone, which for many of the cave's uh, decorations. The cave system during the Paleocene period became much deeper, and eventually when the water level dropped, it would leave glare rooms and cavities in the rock, which would then create what we know as today the Lehman Cave System. Some of your scenic features in the park include the Lexington Arc, Lehman Orchard, an aqueduct, Rhodes Cabin, Stella and Teresa Lakes, and Wheeler Peak Glacier. And we'll get into these uh, a little bit. So we're going to get into the Lehman Caves, because that is kind of the most well-known of the park. So the Lehman Caves used to be a national monument, but it joined the park in 1986. And the cave was known to indigenous people long before the arrival of Europeans. In 1885, Absalom Lehman, who was a rancher, would begin tours into the caves. Visitors' inscriptions in the cave note that it's a use of popularity among recent settlers uh, to the region. Bacteria is the most common species in the cave. However, crickets, spiders, whatever the fuck is pseudoscorpions, please look that up. If you don't know what a pseudoscorpion is, it looks like something straight out of Alien. It has like the small claws of a scorpion, but it looks like it looks like a squishy toy that you would get, like you could just squish it. It's weird. And if that fell on me, I would scream uh, and then immediately just kill it. <laughs> also, don't get me fucking started on cave spiders. We're just not going to talk about that. Anyways, your crickets, your spiders, your pseudoscorpions, your mites, and springtails can live their full lives in the cave. They, uh, Those critters depend on organic material, which are packed in by other animals, or what happens to wash in from the surface. Other creatures do use the cave, but they tend to leave to find food. These creatures would include your chipmunks, your mice, your pack rats, and your bats. There are 10 species of bats that have been found in the Great Basin Park. One of these includes uh, the Townsend's big-eared bat. Now we get into kind of something that, you know, like makes up most parks, which are the trails. So this park has 12 trails, some that range from 0 0.3 miles to 13.1 miles. Uh, you can hike what is called the Mountain View Natural Trail. This is the shorter nature trail, um, and it starts, or it goes up to like 6,825 feet. However, the Wheeler Summit Trail goes up to 10,160 feet in elevation. The Wheeler Summit Trail is meant for more experienced hikers due to it being quite strenuous and the altitude uh, presents very significant hazards. So for any unprepared or inexperienced hikers, it can be very dangerous. There are back co uh, country routes that are maintained throughout the remote southern portion of the park and a number of the trails can be accessed by the road that terminates the primitive Shoshonan campground. The visitor center, if you ever want to stop by, is located on Nevada State Route 487 in Baker. Lehman's Visitor Center, which is another visitor center for the caves, is located on Nevada State Route 488, which is 5.5 miles from Baker. And there's something called, uh, this interested me, there's something called the Forgotten Winchester, and it was a rifle that was made in 1888 that was found leaning up against a juniper tree in 2014, uh, and it is now on display in the Great Basin's Visitor Center. Both of these visitor centers feature exhibits about the park and its geology, uh, its natural and cultural history, as well as theaters with orientation films. So the climate of the Great Basin is a warm, summer, humid, continental climate. The park re uh, receives very little rain, and most of the precipitation that happens is from winter snow or summer thunderstorms. 
all of this water is endor endorheic, which just means that none of the water ever reaches the ocean. Winters in the park are cool, and then obviously, while well, summers are more mild and hot. The weather can quickly change in the backcountry and on Wheeler's Peak, however, so you never really know what's going to happen. Uh, you can kind of have a good idea, but weather can change. The Lehman Caves tend to stay at a general 50 degrees Fahrenheit with a 90% humidity, and higher elevations are cooler and receive more precipitation, while lower elevations are hotter and drier. And that's it! Considering I didn't have too much time to research this, this is kind of all I found, like right at the front where you can kind of look. Uh, there's probably definitely more history that I probably missed, and if I do end up finding stuff, I'll come back to this park. Uh, but as of right now, that is all I can find, and that is the end of the Great Basin. I will see you guys later, well, technically on Saturday, but I mean... For me, that's going to be like two minutes when I start recording that one. <laughs> uh, so I will see you guys on Saturday with the next episode, which I do know what park that is. We are going to go to the Dry Tortugas uh, and visit that park over there, which is actually really interesting. Uh, so I'm excited for that one. And I will see you guys later. Just remember, if you do enjoy this podcast, please like and subscribe. More videos will come out regularly, and I will see you guys later until our next adventure may your trails be filled with wanderlust and i will see y'all in the parks goodbye